Okay, in this video we have another piece of ordnance from history. This is a Finnish designed Molotov cocktail from the Winter War and was also used in the Continuation War. This was used by Finland against the Soviet Union for dealing with tanks. Now, someone had sent me a link to a English translation of some pages from either an organization or museum in Finland with this stuff. Uh, I will post the link that the person sent me inside the description. I suggest you go look it over. There's a lot of good information in it. I took the information from that page, turned it into a PDF, enlarged the pictures to make them better and easier to see for details, and then I posted that file over at my militia. Now, there's a few things from that page I want to do videos on. This is the easiest to do right off the bat. That being relative, I was given this information a couple weeks ago, but I've just been too busy. But uh, this is the easiest I could throw together. Now, Finland is not the first one to use Molotov cocktails. When you actually read through the information on uh, the web page I was sent, apparently the Finnish military looked at examples that were used in the Spanish Civil War from uh, 36 to 38, 39, somewhere around there. Now, the, the initial Molotovs that were used in Spain were bottles with a flammable liquid inside, and then they would tie a rag to the outside, light the, la light the rag on fire, and toss that at tanks. And that was an improved version of something that you could consider a Molotov, but really wasn't, where they use, they would fill bottles full of gasoline, toss those at tanks, and then they would try tossing a torch on top of the tank to set it ablaze. But the really first Molotovs, if you want to think of it that way, were the ones that were the bottles of gas with a rag tied to the outside. Now, Finland looked at that. They, uh, got the information they could on how it worked and thought about how can we improve this. This was right before the Winter War started. They suspected the Soviets were going to do something, but they weren't sure. They realized that they would get hit with a lot of tanks, and they didn't have a lot of weapons that could handle tanks, and they couldn't produce them fast enough or buy them off the international arms market fast enough. So they came up with a few ideas, one being the Molotov cocktail, another one being a shape charge not too much different than the German bundled charge, which is another video I want to do. But uh, with the Finnish version of the Molotov cocktail, they had a bottle with the flammable liquid inside. They then taped two storm candles to one on each side opposite each other, taped them on there. The bottles were capped. I'll go a little bit into the construction, but how this worked, they would light the two storm candles and then they would then take the bottle, toss it at the tank. After it shattered and spread out the thickened fuels, the storm candles would set it alight. Now, a storm candle if you look it up, you will come back with uh, lifeboat matches, which are still produced. You can still get them on Amazon and conce conceivably at eBay and that stuff. Now, what makes those kind of significant, you can light and use them in rain, high winds, or at least moderate winds, and in falling snow. They'll stay lit. They had a, a couple factories up in Finland that produced these uh, storm candles or, or uh, lifeboat matches. So they had a ready uh, available ignition source right there. The bottles they used at first reclaimed alcohol bottles, beer bottles primarily, 
but then once the the uh, winter war started bottlers that were bottling alcohol then produced Molotov cocktails on the same production lines so they just changed out what they were putting in the bottles using the same equipment now instead of uh, shoving a rag down inside they realized that the rag could potentially go out or fall out so they would cap it at first they used regular bottle caps an aluminum style bottle cap but aluminum is a strategic material it's needed for weapons production especially aircraft so eventually the aluminum cap was replaced with a bake light plug a uh, plastic style plug now these storm matches on the side or lifeboat matches storm yeah it says storm matches you had a piece of tape and it says insulating tape they would put down on the side of the bottle attach the matches they would tape it on with more insulating tape two pieces one going up here one going down here and then to reinforcement reinforce it because they had problems where the tape in the severe cold because it is Finland the tape would start coming loose and the matches could fall off so what they started to do, they used some light wire, like a bailing wire or potentially even just a uh, trip wire. It's not, it's kind of in between the two uh, gauges of wire there. They would put, wrap some wire around here, one and some wire around here right over the tape to help hold these storm matches on. Now the filler, this is something I found really interesting. The filler, there was four different uh, mixtures mentioned on the website. The most common was gasoline and pine tar. And then it also mentioned gasoline, kerosene, and pine tar. The third mix was waste alcohol, kerosene, and pine tar. And then the last one, which was probably less common, was sulfate turpentine. Turpentine is a distillate from pine tar, if I remember correctly. Now, the mix on this stuff of the gas to pine tar was the pine tar was approximately one quarter to one third of the weight of the get of gasoline in there so you had a 16 ounce bottle you used between three to six ounces of pine tar and then 10 to 13 ounces of gasoline it would uh, for the most part stay mixed but if it starts to separate shake it a few times then light your uh, storm candles using a lighter your storm matches and then toss it at the tank now the storm they realized through testing and also trial and error using the storm matches like this and having them insulated from the mixture inside having that uh, layer of tape was to keep the heat from the storm matches burning from transferring into the bottle and potentially setting it alight and blowing it up inside the person's hands so the tape was supposed to distribute some of the heat and help prevent thermal cracking during winter because then you could have some serious problems then too but doing it this way without the flame burning on a wick going down inside having it isolated from the fuel source you could use this, light it, and use it within 60 seconds before the uh, storm matches or storm candles would burn out. Now, at first, the Finns used these against Russian tanks, tossing them against division slits in the front of the tanks, trying to blind the crews, and then would use some other type of means for knocking the tank out itself. But they realized fairly quickly that's kind of a waste of resources so then they started tossing the Molotovs onto the rear decks of the Russian tanks which were predominantly T-26's 
These were a very light tank and they had gasoline engines in them. They would toss one or two of these Molotovs onto the rear deck, smash them over the grate. The flaming fuel would get down inside, set fire to the engines and set fire to the fuel. And if it didn't blow up the tank, it barbecued the crew inside. Now the Russians, after the uh, Winter War, or really during it, they seen what was going on, realized the dangers of having a gasoline engine in a tank, and that's when they transferred over to diesel engines, which is what they used on T-34s and their generations of tanks after that. The, the Finns found out that during the Continuation War that the Molotovs were not as effective against T-34s as they were against the T-26s and the T-28s and the BT-5s, BT-7s and that stuff that they faced during the Winter War. But guess what? They'll still work against the tank and that stuff. It's just going to take more of them or larger amounts of the fuel. Because in the engine compartments of tanks, you still got rubber hoses, you still have electrical wiring, you're going to have grease, you're going to have oil that's leaking out of stuff, you're going to have rubber gaskets also that are going to be impregnated with oil and that stuff on the engines. The stuff will burn, it just takes time. Now if you remember from the Molotov video I did a couple years ago, which YouTube took down, gasoline burns quick it basically is like a match it lights burns itself out quickly and then it's gone you needed something to thicken the fuel get it to burn longer and adhere better well Finland being a Nordic country has a lot of pine trees their their solution to it was pine tar and apparently it worked really good now I did do a mock-up on this. It's not very good. Let's see if I can keep it from rolling. Or try to. Okay. Yes, it's not that great, but it gives you somewhat of an idea. So you have your beer bottle here. Piece of tape, piece of tape. Your storm match on here I'm simulating with a piece of straw. So you'd have your storm match on each side opposite each other. Basically what I did, I started the tape on one spot, started coming around, put on my simulated storm match, went over with the tape, put on my other simulated storm mat match, and then went around to hold it in place. Then I went down to the bottom, did the same thing, went around. Now, if I was going to make this look better and more realistic, first off, I wouldn't use uh, black tape. There'd, I'd use uh, insulating a tape appropriate for the era. And I would then go through, use a piece of wire over the top of each piece of tape to uh, help hold my simulated storm matches on. The fuel would be inside. It would be almost full, but you're not going to top it off completely and then you would put a cap on on there. Now being most beer bottles are twist off bottle caps, conceivably if I was making this for reenactment and that stuff I would take my twisted off bottle cap and put it over the top containing my uh, simulated filler inside it. So Now, how could some, this only gives you maybe about 16 ounces of uh, filler inside. Let's say you are in a situation where you have to build one of these to defend yourself. You know, society has collapsed, the earth has been invaded, whatever. Maybe this, these smaller bottles aren't get, giving you enough of a uh, burn, enough fuel in there to get the uh, enemy's vehicles alight. And if you don't start burning that uh, armored personnel carrier, infantry fighting vehicle, main battle tank, or whatever, you know, if you don't uh, get that thing burning, you don't get it destroyed, it's going to start 
wiping people out you're trying to save lives well the easiest thing to do first off is more fuel these are pronks approximately a pint in volume well what would be the next step up from that a quart a quart is two pints now James Wesley Rawls mentioned in the book Patriots his first book in the uh, economics economic collapse series the one that he's probably the most well known for his protagonist in there used quart size mason jars to make Molotovs and that's what occurred to me on the upgrade here so we could take the same initiation system on here transfer it to this and then for closing it off to cap it off and stuff you would just use a used canning lid not one that's still usable one that's already been used because you can't reuse the metal ones once they're used once they're done so you would use that lid to close it up and then you would use your oldest rustiest nastiest looking uh, ring bands on there to hold that lid on and then there you go you would have your manufactured Molotov that you could use against the uh, you know alien uh, main battle tank coming down the road firing off its uh, laser weapons to annihilate and uh, burn up uh, human resistance but uh, now just like with any piece of ordinance I show you from history and tell you and explain to you how it was made so that you can explain it during reenactments or living history events do not make one of these in real life unless it is out of you know non-explosive non-flammable materials then you're just doing it for show you're not going to actually light it and use it at a demonstration you just have it out on a desk or a table do not make one of these for real and use it for nefarious purposes if you do you will get caught you will go to jail for a very long time now with incendiaries like this they're not illegal what is illegal is the intent the purpose that you're making it for and use it for so there you go uh, one quick note for the reenactors who are going to do this for their displays and stuff there was other versions of the Molotov cocktail that they manufactured in plants in factories but this style here made up they estimate at least 80% of the Molotov cocktails that were used in the Winter War alone. The Finnish military did write up a pamphlet for distributing to the troops on how to make these in the field themselves. But people going back looking through records, talking to veterans of the Winter War, very very few ever saw that pamphlet but magically this style of Molotov was being seen and created all across the front for the fighting against the Soviets so it was one of those things of people trying to think of the uh, a solution to a problem and they were coming up to with essentially the same solution and unbeknownst between one unit to the next they were coming up with the same design for their solution which is pretty interesting that does happen in history sometimes during warfare now for all my engineer brothers in the patriot and militia movements always remember essayons